So since I was a little kid from the age of like seven or eight or something like that, I've always been trying to make money in any way. So here are some of the weirdest ways I made money throughout my life. So some of these ways in which I made money were like done when I was really young, like eight, like in fourth grade and stuff like that. So I didn't make like millions or something out of these. Some of them I might have made like 10, 20 dollars, a few hundred, a couple thousand, something like that. But the point is that they are still weird ways and there was money made. And of course the profit margins are like huge, but the amount of money is very little bit, so it's not very significant. But I thought I'd share them anyway, and what you could benefit from this video is it shows you like what some people are willing to pay for, and maybe some of these ideas could be thought of in a larger scale. So one of my first ever like side hustles that I did in school were, if I'm not mistaken, was in fourth grade. I can't remember if I like discovered this myself or if I saw some kids who already had these, but it was basically water bottles in which you break like a pen or a highlighter or something or you take out like that spongy inky part inside the pen and you put it inside the bottle and then the whole bottle like gets the color of the ink so if you use like highlighters it becomes like neon yellow and neon orange and things like that so I didn't even buy pens or water bottles or anything I would completely use things that I would find like for free. So I would find pens on the floor, highlighters on the floor, or even old highlighters that I had that, for example, they finished working, but they're still like a spongy ink thing inside. And I'll just break them or take out the sponge thing by opening them up and put it in a bottle, which it would be a empty bottle that I'd also either find on the floor at school or I'd find it like lying around in the house and I'll just put like tap water in it and put this, shake it up a bit, then take out the sponge and you'd have this neon water, a bottle of like this neon colored water. And then I started like marketing it to people at school and this is way before like social media and stuff like that. So I would literally just be like verbally telling them or showing them like, oh, look at this, it's so cool. And I would sell it to them for like, well, it would be like from one to maybe two and a half dollars or something and I remember I would even like brand them sort of I'd say like oh this one is like the Pepsi and this one is the Fanta and this is the and this is like the super neon colored one and and I even had some cool shaped water bottles like some like mini round ones and they looked pretty cool and I'd say oh this looks like an apple but it's like neon orange and the kids would buy it, you know, it would, uh, they would buy the idea, they would buy the bottles from me. For me at that time, it was enough money to go to the canteen and buy like a chocolate milk and those uh, pretzels and stuff like that. The second and one of the most lucrative ways I made money in school was doing people's homework. So doing people's homework paid pretty well and it would be pretty easy homework and it would be usually my homework as well, so I would have already done it or I've, I had to do it anyway. And then I would just basically copy it for someone else as well. And I don't know, people were just so lazy that people would literally pay me like $50 for like one page of just copying homework. So that was very lucrative. I even wrote like a speech for someone for like English class where they had to do like a speech and I would charge like maybe a hundred dollars for that like I don't know it was it was pretty crazy like <laughs> when you think about like the effort and the age and the amount of money you'd get for it it was very very worth it it was like very easy and a lot of money like overpaying for it I was not planning to say this in this video but I even made fake report cards for some people I don't recommend doing these things by the way I'm just telling you things that I did in the past and when I did this like faking report card or whatever I was like 12 or something so it's like it's not like something I do now or something like that it was just like way back in the day just hustling as a child and one of the fake report cards I remember I got like I don't know like maybe fifteen hundred dollars or something for it or twelve hundred dollars I don't know it was that was probably the biggest like 
thing I ever made money from in school. That one was crazy. Although the guy was my friend and I think he just like added money just like for fun or something like that. Because I actually only was gonna charge him like, I don't know, $400 maybe and he just like added like so much more just like. The third way in which I made money and this one was actually when I was in A-levels. So I was like in year 11 or 12. So I was like 17 or 16 or something. And honestly, I didn't actually make much money from this. Like, especially for that age, like, like, okay, if you're like 12 and you're making hundreds of dollars, then it's nice. But if you're like 16, 17, I made a grand total of like maybe $50 from this. But it didn't take much effort or anything and and yeah so for me it was fine although it, it was not much money but i did it anyway and it was basically when those fidget spinners were going viral and everyone was getting them and stuff like that and they were also being sold at a very high price in the stores where it was in stock i went on souk.com which i think now is bought by amazon or something and i found a bunch of them at like a really cheap price like two dollars maybe or something in the stores they were being sold for i don't know like twelve dollars or something just because of like the hype so I bought like a bunch of these for like two dollars. I got like a box of them, and and because it was it was more targeted to or, to a, like a younger audience, I gave them to like my younger siblings, and I told them to sell it, and I'd give them a commission. So they would go, and then they would sell them in school, and then in the end, I got like maybe fifty dollars and then i gave them like three dollars maybe as a commission and then apart from that i had like all these leftover fidget spinners from the ones that didn't get sold because the hype came and went really quickly and i and i had even like advertised it on snapchat so so some of the younger people i had on snapchat said oh let, let me get one so then i'd like get my brothers to go and give them one and whatever so although i made a very small amount of money I still liked that it taught me how when you sell something in general, any product, I experienced the feeling of like having a surplus of them and having extra ones that you could give your family and friends for free and keep for yourself and still be in profit. Because I actually wanted a fidget spinner for myself. That's why I even searched for it, because I just wanted to buy one. And then I saw that, wow, these are so cheap and people are paying like triple this price so I can just buy these, sell them and keep a few. It'll be like I got some for free basically. So I basically just wanted a fidget spinner and this way I just got like 10 fidget spinners for free and made extra money. It was just very spontaneous and, and you know, the profit margin on it was so much that I could afford to just have all these extra fidget spinners that didn't sell and just gave them out to my siblings and I was just really happy about it. Another really weird way I made money and this actually was like a new thing like I was surprised I didn't know like people pay for this was that when I was in Monaco on holiday I posted some snaps to like the snap map story or whatever like that public map or something like that. When you do that usually you get a lot of uh, people like messaging you it's usually a specific kind of people if you know what I mean offering services uh, not very honorable services <laughs> but it's usually that and you just ignore them and whatever but then this guy messages me and he's like hey uh, can I like buy some of your snaps and I was like what like for what he's like oh so I can like put them in my story and stuff like that I was like uh, I mean I, I would have sent them for free like I didn't really care but he was like offering he's like oh I'll pay for it I was like okay how much are you gonna pay for it i just suddenly became like <laughs> all right then this is what we're doing and then he's like i don't know like 10 euros for like 10 snaps i was like nah how about like five euros for three snaps i <laughs> just i have like no idea how much snaps are meant to cost but he just agreed to that and then and then i thought okay no way is he gonna actually pay me for like snaps like of of nothing, of just like a restaurant or like the view or anything like that. I don't know, he could have just googled or maybe he wanted to look authentic so that no one could like reverse image search. Although that's, that's, this one is actually important because you should be careful because when you see all these gurus and influencers out there and they post like a snap of like 
uh, an AP and a Lamborghini and uh, this restaurant and hotel and holiday and the yacht and this and that. Like, you don't know, maybe maybe he did this as well. Maybe he saw someone posting something and asked him and bought them from him and posted them. And that's why he has them and you won't see them anywhere else. You won't find them on Google or something. So this is a thing. So this is actually pretty interesting. As dumb as it sounds, it's actually pretty interesting that people do this. So to make sure that he like pays me, I would he would say like, okay, show me the snaps that you could send me. So I would send them to him and write my name across it so that like he can't like steal it or something. Uh, not that I even cared, but I was just like, you know, I want to see if he'll actually pay me for this. And I could say that I got paid for this. And then he's like, yeah, okay, I'll take this one and this one and this one. So then I send them to him and then he asks for my bank details. And I'm thinking, okay, he better send it. And he sent it. I literally like got money from him, like 30 euros because he bought like, I don't know how many, like 10 snaps or 15 snaps or something like that. And he was, he even wanted to buy even more and stuff like that. But then I don't know, I guess... He didn't want to, he wanted like discounts and I was like, no and whatever. Or I think I got a bit excited and started telling him, oh, I'll give you more, I'll give you more, I'll give you And then he's like, uh, okay, I think he got a bit overwhelmed. So these are some of the weirdest ways that I've ever made money in my life. Even though it was a little bit of money, it still had some lessons. Like even the, the ink bottles, it shows you like the power of just marketing something so rubbish to people to the point that they'll buy it. Like even one or two dollars for a bottle with ink from the floor is like great, you know? Like one or two dollars could buy you like a fresh juice from a shop or uh, a Pepsi or whatever. But as in it could give you something that you could actually drink or benefit from or eat like a chocolate or whatever instead of just some junk from the floor but it's crazy that people do just buy stuff if they mark if it's marketed correctly so each of these things actually has a lesson in it and that's all for today's video and i'll see you next week